We're pushing on now. Quite a climate change from the Bob Jane T Marts 1000 to the Lexmark Indy 300, where Russell Engel bounced back for his second round victory of the season. Quite an occasion. And I tell you what. There was a lot more depth to this victory than you might think. But, Russell, let's firstly talk about what happened on the track. Quite an exciting weekend for you. Not an easy one either. Lots of carnage, as usual. Yeah, always is it, Indy. Uh, tight street circuit. Uh, one of those sort of places that you've got to qualify at the point end. If you qualify at the front, it makes your job a hell of a lot easier. And I qualified third, my best qualifying position of the year. Got some good starts and uh, put it out front. But, uh, look, there was a lot of pressure on, too, because you've got one of the hard, couple of the hardest guys uh, behind me all weekend and uh, sort of kept, kept it up there and really good. But it's just a fantastic place to uh, have a win as well. It was great atmosphere, huge. Anyone that hasn't been to IndyCar before are just missing out big time. Like It's, it's just a great event to go to, and uh, it's good to be the main support act with the IndyCars sort of supporting us, so it's great. Well, in my opinion, one of the keys to the entire weekend was you being able to get out of pit lane just in front of Murph when there was uh, a slight bit of contact there. This was a very, very critical pit stop. Just one of those pivotal moments, as we like to say in the commentary box, and there it is. Oh. 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 Murph, Murph was just giving me a bit of a hand to get going. Give me a wave. Hey, Russ. Murph was just giving me a bit of a hand to get going, so it was, I was a little bit sluggish, and he thought, I'll just give you a bit of a hand to keep the revs up, Russ. <laughs> so that's good, thanks. Yeah, thanks, mate, no worries. Did you think much about it at the time, Murph? Oh, just a little bit. Yeah. No. Did you did you talk to the guys on the radio about it? Oh, just a little Okey bit. Okey I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, they were saying that back to me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, listen, you know, uh, this is one of these. Uh, probably here we one go. Of these, now, tell us. Draws. So, before you go on, oh. Murph, tell us what you're saying to each other here. I'm going. Get it, Russ. Geez, that was a good race, mate. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Murph. I appreciate the comments. Thank you. No, mate. No, mate. No. Oh, that was a great race, but he did a, such a fantastic job, you know. Congratulations. Oh, Should Murph, be a good race oh, tomorrow. Murph, <laughs> Murph, you're too kind. You're too kind. Jeez, I love you, Murph. No, Russ, really, really, Russ. You did a great job. Come on, admit it. You did a fantastic job, mate. Well, that was a great race. How about that? We'll go and have a check the scape after this and have a beer, Murph, shall we? Murph, you're too kind to me. Enough praise. Please leave me alone. Jesus. Thank you. Jeez, it went on longer than what I thought it did. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. That, that, folks, was one of those cheap Japanese movies, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Without Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a bit so of a... What did he actually say to you, Greg? What did, what did Russell say? I think, I, I think Russ might want to answer that question. What did, what did you say, Russ? Oh, we were just ah, discussing the ah, incident. Ah, and, uh, <laughs> let, let me <laughs> help you out, Russ. Just, just a bit of a discussion yeah. as drivers do, and we're yeah. still a little bit hot and sweaty. And, uh, Rubbin's racing, you know. really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. But uh, no, like, look, there was a bit of an inquiry afterwards, and uh, we both put our cases forward. And at the end of the day, you know, I was sort of in the back, you know, we got out in the fast lane all right, and that's when contact was made in the fast lane. That's how the rules are written. So in the end, everything turned out okay. The big yeah. thing, the big thing, Billy, I think the issue issue comes back to again, and this is this was brought up at Pukekohe. The issue is that the the rules. The rules aren't clear and weren't clear enough, and basically it was very vague, yeah. and and it hasn't it hadn't been sorted out properly. I, I interpreted it one way, and therefore that's why it was followed up. Whereas, and then when we went to the stewards' inquiry, they said it was something else. So it, again, it was just an area where we interpreted it one way, and and, and uh, you know there was a bit of an argument about it at uh, at, at Pukekohe as well. But, but, but Murph, could, there's could, no way that Russell would run into you on purpose. No way would Russell run into you on purpose. You know that. No, no. Uh, no, no, Steve, no. Ask Stevie Johnson. He was in front. Yeah, ask Steve. Russell was in front. Yeah. He wouldn't run into you. He wouldn't just drive into you because Russell, he could get there. Russell was in front. He didn't run into anyone. Well, you just drive straight in the lane. In the lane. You're just allowed to do that. Hey, no, Rubin's racing. Look, you actually thing, are allowed to do thing, that. The yeah, thing oh, that yeah. I think the thing what Greg's trying to say is we all believed one yeah. rule, and what happened was obviously when it was clarified, it wasn't the way 95% of the, the teams Believed understood it, it to be, and it comes back to consistency. Yep. You know, it should have been pointed out at the but start they, of the year. But then they tried to change it when we got to New Zealand, and I think everyone was of the same opinion that uh, we were, it, it was better off left the way it was rather than what they were trying to do in New Zealand, where they were saying that 
you, you could push in the fast lane, and but you couldn't hit on the side of the car. So yeah, I mean, it's a bit confusing. I, I was uh, pinged in the same race, I think, and at, at Indy we were running six, so we were sort of uh, a bit disappointed too with it. But uh, we were actually pinned in the uh, merging lane, and I, I guess that's the difference is uh, if you make contact. In fact, I was actually merging into the fast lane. I was trying to slow up, and uh, Paul Weir was trying to get into his pit, and he's actually come across and hit me. But and whereabouts did he hit you? Did he hit you in the side of the car? On the front. Well, so I was the one merging. So I was, I was actually coming out of the track. And, uh, Where'd and you I, hit him? And I was slowing up. I've hit him in the rear of the so car. So basically your front right hit his left rear, rear quarter panel. Rear quarter panel. And, and what they're saying of the stewards is uh, if you're in the, in the fast lane, a bit of contact's OK. But if you're but, merging either way, any contact, it's, um, it's the guy that's merging's fault. Now, Brad, the whole thing is, Jason merged sort of sensibly trying to do it in a normal, nice way. <laughs> Russell just sped straight into the lane and smashed the side of the lane. <laughs> and that, see, that's the difference. That's the difference. That's the, yeah. If you just want to yeah. explain merging, yeah. there's one way of doing it, nice another guy way of merging. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I've been shopping okay. with you're Russell, okay. and it's not just Murphy does that too. When he gets out of a car park, he merges like that from any shopping centre. <laughs> You're straight into the main road. Hey, 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 it's pretty tough in those car parks these days. You've got to be hard. You've got to be hard. And his mother's, his an mother's everywhere with kids, and it's tough, you know, you've got to be tough. Marcus, uh, it was a tough weekend for you because while your teammate won, you lost a bit of ground in the championship there. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Let's take some heat off my teammate here. For a while, you know? <laughs> He's really copped it. As a teammate, I'll take a bit of a rap here. In segment four, you're starting to take the heat off him. <laughs> Fifteen segments? <laughs> yeah. Trouble. Trouble. Big trouble. <laughs> um, we had a really tough weekend at Indy. We... Um, we had a battle in qualifying. It was the first time I'd missed the top 10 shootout for the year. And I can tell you, we had the warm up the next day and the top 10 shootout straight after, and you had to stay in pit lane. And that was the worst half an hour, I reckon, of my year because I had to watch these blokes <laughs> run around as my championship was dwindling away. That was the second time I've ever been in the shootout, so I don't, I don't know what you're whinging about there. <laughs> Actually, I get sick of watching him in the shootouts myself. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's all relative. Did you uh, did you have a good time at the Lexmark Indy 300? I mean, uh, obviously you went in there with that that new aura of being a Bathurst winner, which is uh, was it any different for you, Rick? Well, I buggered the shootout shootout lap up, that's for sure. <laughs> um, You're looking at those balconies, Rick. Okay. Actually, last year, last year at um, Indy, I didn't go too well. I qualified second last, and unfortunately, the bloke behind me blew an engine. So, I definitely had a bit of improving to do. And um, yeah, we we come in sixth place, which was quite good to gather up some points. But yeah, it was definitely um, coming down off a pretty big high from winning Bathurst. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about that latest round of the V8 Supercar Championship.